Welcome back to Why in the Morning. And if it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel. So you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira. So you can find me across all my social. This particular segment, we dive into an interview that looks at uh, motor vehicle tracking and also insurance. So in studio, I'm joined by Joseph Munge. He's the final track founder and CEO, and he was also uh, part of 2018 Top 40 and the 40. Thank you very much, Joseph, for creating time to be with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. You're much, very much welcome. <laughs> so, uh, you were among the Top 40 and the 40 in 2018. Yeah, true. Right. So, yes. which company was it listed? Because I'm, I'm considering the mm. fact that I had a conversation and you have serial uh, sort of businesses going on. Uh, for 2018 was a uh, Finatrack, Finatrack Global Limited, where we were speci specializing in uh, GPS technology and uh, fleet management solutions. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, what is Finatrack all about before you even get into insurance? Uh, uh -huh. uh, so, for Finatrack, uh, we were licensed by Communication Authority of Kenya mm -hmm. as application services providers, uh, whereby we have uh, div uh, GPS tracking devices which we use to. Uh, installed in vehicles and uh, once we install them in the particular vehicles mm -hmm. the owners are able to monitor the real-time information about the vehicles and also historical information mm -hmm. so we also couple this with the uh, added solutions where we are able to help uh, people with fleets uh, efficiently manage their fleets mm -hmm. and also cut on costs of operations mm -hmm. yeah so for how long have you been running the business uh, since 2017 mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So, is the is final track the main source of other several business, or how did it happen? As you mentioned, mm. other sort of businesses that you took. Uh, actually, started it later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, before that, I was also in insurance, and uh, and I was also in uh, logistics. So basically, uh, I came up uh, across the solution. Uh, uh, relating it to the current challenges in the in those industries, mainly insurance, whereby the car tracking really helps, and also in logistics, uh, managing the trucks. Yeah, and that's how we come up. Uh, I came up with it now, right. the Fina truck. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What was the market gap that you saw in the in the in the market that you felt that uh, you were going to start mm. uh, a GPS uh, car tracker? Uh, for me, uh, there are so many in the yeah. market. So yeah, true. Quite also unique about your company. Uh, so first of all, uh, it was mainly on the features. So most companies were offering the basic tracking, whereby you can only maybe view the real-time location, the historic playback, and uh, maybe switch off the vehicle using your phone. So first we look for additional solutions, such as voice monitoring, and also video monitoring, which we couple it with the, with the device. And also our angle was different, because we were mainly focusing also on the risk, risk aspect, whereby uh, instead of selling the device to just protect the owner, you are able to incorporate it with an element of insurance such that in the event of theft mm -hmm. of your vehicle, if you had our GPS tracking device, uh, which was certified, uh, you could save on the excess charges, which are usually cut on the amount which you amount to be refunded. Yeah. You, you mentioned something earlier on that uh, there's the basic uh, aspect of uh, of uh, GPS uh, installation of trucks, mm. the, the trackers. Then you, you quite specifically mentioned like uh, sound tracking and video tracking. What is the difference compared to just going to another company that are going to give me like uh, uh, on location, finding where my car is, mm -hmm. uh, locking my car in a way that no one can actually drive it like through my phone, mm -hmm. even just uh, uh, location on yeah. it. Uh -huh. So what is so different about uh, the voice and the video? And, and the video. Because uh, from our analysis, we, we, what, what we realized was, you see, for the vehicle aspect, most of the risks weren't from outside. M the, most of the problems came from inside. So you could find if it's an, uh, a case of loss to the vehicle, maybe goods, uh, the high probability was maybe the staff were involved or people close to where the vehicle used to operate. So in the event of an emergency, instead of you just knowing where the vehicle is, you can be able to hear the voice inside the vehicle of the people speaking or be able to see the actual footage of the people inside the vehicle. Okay. The chances are high you'll identify the people inside. Mm -hmm. They won't be strangers. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so that, yeah, that, that was that our angle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, okay. in most cases when it comes to that, it's only... It, 
most cases happens uh, uh, within people you know. Yes, yes. It's mainly an inside job. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, that's mm, very interesting. Yeah. So let's go back to the type of uh, the the best uh, GPS uh, vehicle trackers that uh -huh. we have. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, uh, and how do I identify th that this particular tracker is suitable for my cow? Yeah. Uh, f first of all, it depends on your needs, mm -hmm. what what you're focusing on. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you could find uh, private vehicle owners and commercial vehicle owners have uh, different interests mm -hmm. in the GPS tracking. So mainly for the commercial owners, it's uh, cutting on costs and being able to monitor the use of, of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Uh, and on the other side, for the private vehicle owners, they mainly consider the, their personal security and the security of their vehicle. So when looking for a device, first it depends on your needs, because uh, let's say you're in uh, the truck industry, one of the, your main cost is fuel, so uh, your main focus can be how can you monitor the fuel consumption or the fuel usage, and in the event of fuel theft, how can you be able to know? Right. Yeah, so, so you'd be skewed towards such a device. Oh. But if you're just your own vehicle, you may not be really considering how much fuel you're spending, because you are the one fueling your vehicle and the one using it. Uh, but on the other side, you'll mainly consider maybe aspects such as theft and uh, the personal security of your vehicle. Right. Yeah. Now let's talk about how affordable is it? And uh, is it a subscription fee that you want us to repay in a monthly? Mm. How does it work? Uh, that was also one of our main uh, entry points into the market because uh, we realized most of the people were charging quite a high substantial amount and also had uh, recurring mm -hmm. costs. So like for us, uh, our entry product was a basic tracker uh, with also the voice monitoring, which we were able to offer at 10,000, a flat fee without any renewal. Uh, all the client had to do, because uh, for the device, for it to be able to trans transmit the data, mm -hmm. we partnered with Safaricom. Okay. So they just load in the airtime for the tracker, and they're able to use the tracker for a lifetime. Okay. Yeah. So that is when you want to find the location of your car, you can call and it will give you the feedback. Uh, no, us, ours is different because okay. we, we have apps, oh, right. both available on iPhone, Android, mm -hmm. and also the desktop browser. So you can be able to real time, just log in from any device mm -hmm. yeah, to your account and you're able to view oh, the right. vehicle location. And you can also be able to see anywhere the vehicle was, anywhere it stopped, for how long it stopped. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now let's dive into insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any policies that you're putting in place for the sake of your clients when it comes to insurance? Because uh, for insurance, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we started with insurance, mm -hmm. where I had registered an insurance agency, okay. where we were independent insurance agents. Mm -hmm. So for, insu for the insurance aspect, we partner with uh, insurance service providers. Mm -hmm. So these are the underwriters who are able to provide uh, competitive rates mm -hmm. and uh, proper cover. So in the event of loss, you are almost sure if you've complied with all their terms, mm -hmm. you'll be compensated. So where we integrate the tracking with the insurance is mainly on the aspect of uh, theft. Because on theft, uh, what a lot of people don't know, if your vehicle is stolen, you won't be compensated the whole amount. The insurance company will have to deduct an amount. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many percentage? Yeah, uh, m mostly it's 20%. Ah. Yeah, 20%. So if your vehicle was valued at 1 million, uh -huh. that's 200,000 which will be deducted. Okay. Yeah. That is if you don't have an anti-theft device mm -hmm. on the vehicle. But, oh. uh, so once we issue you the anti-theft device, now which will be for the tracker, now the excess will move from 20% to 5%. Okay. So they still deduct something, but it will be substantially lower. Yeah. And uh, for still under insurance, because uh -huh. you own a company that deals with insurance. Yeah. Let's look at situations whereby a client, when do I like identify that this particular insurance is good for me in terms of car insurance? Uh -huh. So, because uh, most of the time is when, when it all starts, it's always like very like insurance covered everything. But when yeah. an incident happens, uh -huh. an accident happens, it's always like a push and pull yeah. situation. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, true. Well, that's a common challenge, especially in the Kenyan market. I think IRA is really struggling uh, to enhance the efficiency within the market because the complaints have been for long. Mm -hmm. uh, so mainly for you to assess an insurance company, of course the first place is maybe to look at the, the, fi the financial reports. So IRA usually publishes this on their website. You can easily analyze the, uh, the claim payment ratio 
for these insurance companies. So this is a ratio of, uh, for the claims reported uh, for the losses incurred, what percentage of these claims has this insurance company been able to pay over a certain period of time? And uh, next from that, you can also look for a competent uh, person within the industry, most probably an independent insurance agent or uh, a broker okay. who can be able to compare with you these different uh, service providers. Because uh, mostly what happens in Kenya, you find that uh, we have standardized policies all over. So they're, they're not really unique. So what maybe comes in as a difference is maybe the cost. So for you, uh, for the amount you're paying, you really want uh, you really want to be given a guarantee of the quality of the service which will be able to benefit from this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And is it actually legal to insure a car like twice? No, no, no. It's not. It's not. Because uh, uh, so, some people used to talk about it as a coinsurance, mm -hmm. but uh, it doesn't work. Because mm -hmm. even uh, recently, IRA came up. Uh, it's not IRA, actually, it's Aki, the Association of Kenya Insurance mm -hmm. uh, Companies. They came up with a unified mm -hmm. platform through which insurance for vo motor vehicles is issued. So once you're issued a cover by a particular company, you can't insure that vehicle again mm -hmm. with any other company until your cover is either, either cancelled or expires. Okay, yeah. so let's just uh, break it down uh -huh. for better understanding, right? So when it comes to uh, an insurance cover, so what does it really cover in specific aspects so that we might just avoid this uh, situation so by this? Uh, for, the, for the push and pull. So mainly it's to consider the types of insurance. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying insurance, you'll notice on the proposal form, they've ticked, uh, there the are three boxes. Okay. So there's one uh, called the third party only insurance. From that, there's the third party, fire and theft insurance. Mm -hmm. And then finally, there's the, there's the comprehensive insurance. Okay. Yeah. So these cover different aspects. So for the third party only, once you purchase this insurance, your vehicle is not covered. It's only to pay mm -hmm. for bodily injury or death to another person caused by your vehicle. Okay. You see? Yes. Yeah, so if, so if you bought third party insurance and your vehicle is damaged, uh, it's straightforward. You have to repay it yourself. Uh, from that, you have uh, the next stage. You have third party fire and theft. So that covers the third party and also covers theft to uh, losses to your vehicle caused by theft and fire mm. only. And it's, it the ends there. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So there are the different types. Eh? Mm -hmm. The certificate will look similar. It will be the same, but the different types of covers. So one has to know which cover. So it's easy for you when you're going for a cover to pick a, like a different one compared to what you really wanted if you don't seek consultation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this happens to a lot of people who, who are looking at the uh, cost side of it. Because uh, it starts the third party only, it's cheap. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the third party fine theft is cheaper. And then finally for the comprehensive, it covers the third party uh, fire theft and now this one covers losses to your vehicle mm -hmm. caused by an accident right. yes over and above that okay uh, <laughs> then we're going to the holiday season yeah. in, the uh -huh. holiday mode. Mm -hmm. then in this particular season also uh the year has been really tough because people yeah. uh -huh. lost their job so in, in most cases the crime aspect of it has really increased yeah so in a situation whereby we have a gps track on my car mm -hmm. and um, i've gone you know home up country uh -huh. so uh, then some you know in a situation whereby my car gets stolen uh -huh. then uh, of course i have my track i can access through my phone mm -hmm. so uh, how fast and uh, how fast is it to probably then what are the measures put in place to seek help like or to seek help yeah. for it well, yeah. so so the first thing which you advise eh, immediately you realize your vehicle is stolen mm -hmm. eh, before you do anything first report okay to maybe the nearest police station or uh, to any security agency within that area because mm -hmm. that's the first contingency measure and then from there you can be able to share with them because uh, our app is, it can easily share the information right. with the with the particular security agencies where you are able to monitor with them where the vehicle is. And then once the vehicle is at a secure location, let's say in a marketplace somewhere common, eh, mm -hmm. you, are, you can be, now be able, through your app, switch off the vehicle. Because mm -hmm. once you immobilize the vehicle using your app, the key can't start it again. 
you have to immobilize it again uh, you have to return the power using the app okay. only mm -hmm. yeah all right mm -hmm. so let's look at it in a general aspect uh -huh. now you being a, like i would like to call it like a serial entrepreneur yeah what how did it all start? Was it via this, uh, you know, truck company, or was it under your background, which is insurance? Because uh, for me, uh, my, my undergraduate was in actuarial science, mm -hmm. so from it, I got a, a little bit background of, on the insurance, mm -hmm. and uh, from there, I went straight immediately after graduating. I did a certificate of proficiency in insurance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, once I entered the market, my main element was looking at the side of the risk. Because uh, what happens, even if you buy insurance, it doesn't cover you all the risks. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, uh, one of the main angles of entering insurance is immediately you buy insurance, you should assume you don't have insurance. Okay. So that means immediately you have insurance, you should take all necessary measures on your end. Mm -hmm. to prevent any risks from occurring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was my main motivating factor also in founding the Finatra Global Limited. Uh, and can you yeah. save money through insurance? Receive? Save money. Through save money. Yeah. Ah, no. Because the, uh, th there are some policies which say they are saving money, uh -huh. but uh, when you analyze them, th that's not called uh, saving. Because uh -huh. uh, what happens, uh, in insurance we call those endowment policies. Ah. Yeah, so w what they mean is we are covering you okay. for this particular period of time, mm -hmm. and, and they are mainly life. They are life insurance policies. Eh? Mm -hmm. If you don't die <laughs> within this particular period of time, <laughs> unlike motor insurance, where you pay and the money goes, mm -hmm. on survival, we'll give you back this certain amount of money, mm -hmm. which will have also invested in some areas, mm -hmm. so you'll, it will come with an, an extra benefit ah. on top. So it's, it's not really an, a saving product okay. yeah. yeah but i think uh, the, uh, what, what it's called a saving product because mm -hmm. it's easier for the market to understand mm -hmm. and like me coming and telling you there's an endowment policy mm -hmm. why well, it will be difficult for me to maybe convince you or uh, in, in enlighten you more but if i tell you it's a savings policy it's easier for you maybe to to see it as a viable thing mm -hmm. yeah tell, me, tell us how was the experience like for you being uh on uh, top 40 and a 40. Uh, mm. How was that experience for you? And uh, did it come with any opening doors to broader market? How was the experience? Uh, yeah, yeah, it created uh, market awareness. Yeah, so th th that was my main uh, thing mm -hmm. which I got from it. Uh, but for, for me, I wasn't really working towards it. It's not something which you sit and say, uh, I want to be in the top 40 and uh, under 40, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm starting this business. So it was mainly an appreciation of what I was able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took it lightly and uh, yeah, immediately after getting the award, uh, I just went back to the normal like, life of operating, like <laughs> operating the business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I've noticed from uh, with you earlier on before we started this conversation, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you run a couple of businesses. Yeah. The web design, logistics, then there's the final track. There are six of them and I'm yeah. at halfway. Yeah. Probably the mission <laughs> rest. And uh, mm -hmm. what, is, what is your whole uh, thought behind uh, uh, opening up these different branches of businesses? And is mm -hmm. it your way to financial freedom? Uh, for me, no, I, I can't really say it's the way to financial freedom. Uh -huh. the, the way I look at uh, business, the business is about mainly service. So once I look at a particular area and I see it's something which I can offer a solution for, and I can be able to maybe do it better than it's being done, something which I consider, and I take it up as a challenge. Uh, mainly, most of the business which I've started, so I start by training on it, mm -hmm. I do my research, see if it's something which I can do, uh, try it on a small area. If the people like it and uh, see it's something good, uh, the good thing, uh, I, I have a lawyer on call. So you just uh, call her, tell her, hey, I have this idea, uh, these are the names which I think can work, uh, register it. So that's how we get a new company, mm -hmm. and we run with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you been in, in employment before? No, never. No, been in never. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What was your first? What was the name of your first company? So before before online advisors, mm -hmm. when I was in school, mm -hmm. uh, we started a company called Walters okay. Trading Company. Mm -hmm. So we started it as a family. Was when I was in campus. So with this, uh, we we cons concentrated on the supplies. It was mainly on construction materials. Mm -hmm. So from it, I was able to learn a lot about running a business, you know, from scratch. So you are able to start sp uh, small, 
uh, we were able to apply for loans, uh, got a few trucks, and started from there. That was, I think, was in second year or something. Okay. So by the time I was finishing, that's when I ventured into insurance. Because right. now, now I'd completed my degree. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried uh, convincing some of my friends to start. Uh, they, know they, did. They, they didn't uh, <laughs> look at that line as a viable line. Uh -huh. So I just went in alone. I right. uh, started now the insurance agency. Okay. Yeah. And then from the insurance agency, mm -hmm. the others came along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you look at the GPS uh, mm -hmm. vehicle truck, uh, mm -hmm. vehicle truck. So who is eligible to start that kind of sort of business? Do does one require any skills, uh, like educational, going to educational school, and learning, all about it, uh, or just mm -hmm. who is eligible mm -hmm. to start that sort of kind of business? I can't say educational, because for me in uh, in my education background, there's no topic called <laughs> GPS. <laughs> yeah. So so it wasn't in school, uh -huh. and. Uh, I think the main thing in business, eh, uh -huh. uh, cause uh, when you look at the educational side, uh -huh. mainly the academic, uh -huh. cause uh, like for me, I studied until the PhD level. Uh -huh. uh, I can say over ninety percent of of what I've learned. You have cleared your PhD. I've cleared the coursework. Okay. Uh, it's, it's the thesis which I'm supposed <laughs> to pursue. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, which, which I'm not focused on uh, currently, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just do it. Eh? Okay. But uh, what you realize is. Mm. The academic uh, knowledge right. and the practical knowledge, uh, there's quite a disconnect. Right. So for you, it's, uh, you have to get the initiative yourself. Mm. If you want to study about maybe GPS, insurance, all of this is available within the market. Mm. So there are people who know more than you. There are people who have written uh, content about it. Mm -hmm. There are website on it, websites on it. So if you do your own research, where you're guided by what you're looking at and your goal, you can easily get all this information online. Mm. Yeah, because uh, I can say everything is self-taught. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. And uh, looking at uh, all of your businesses, six of them in numbers, mm. yeah. are they sustainable by themselves or for since you started them, are they uh, sustainable? Of you? course, th there's a downside to, to running different uh, several businesses because mm -hmm. you'll find uh, most of the time you're concentrating on the losers because... Uh, when, they be, when one business is doing well, uh, you, you leave it alone because it's doing well. You come and concentrate on the one which is not doing well. Mm -hmm. So you can find that uh, when you do that, the one which was doing well now becomes average mm -hmm. as you're trying to lift this other one up. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I try to do is get a long-term view. Mm -hmm. So if this is not the core business which I'm doing, but uh, there's a long-term prospect on it, mm -hmm. uh, my, my first objective is to keep it alive. Okay. So you make sure that it, it never drains me of money. Keep or, yeah, life. yeah. Or uh, it doesn't drain me of my time. Mm -hmm. So if we can sustain it and grow it uh, progressively over time, so instead of looking at how much profit I'll make in one year, I try and look at it maybe in 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, what can we be able to do for the people? Because mm -hmm. uh, there are some which, like at the moment, let's say the web development, it's not making as much profit. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, on the terms of impact, it's causing a lot of impact. In what ways? Because mm, for the web development on our end, we don't do it uh, whereby we create websites to sell. Mm -hmm. We look for problems within the market mm -hmm. and create a website for it. Okay. So for example, uh, one of the main problems which we are tr trying to solve in the insurance industry mm -hmm. is claims. So we came up with a website called www.claims.co.ke. So through this website, people are able to increase the efficiency of their claim settlement, which is a main headache in the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. So you can be able to easily report the claim, follow up online, get a lawyer mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. a mediator when stuck online, mm -hmm. and also contact IRA directly okay. through the same portal. You know what I've noticed? Uh -huh. That with all of your business, businesses, they're connected. It's just somewhere we have to input insurance. Uh -huh. is, is it conscious decision that you took that mm. I am good at insurance, that is what I know. So mm -hmm. everything that I'm going to do, it will have something to do with insurance. Do with insurance. Mm. Yeah, because uh, for me, uh, I think it's good to consider your strong points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, insurance is one of my strong points. Uh, and for me to offer value in insurance, I need not necessarily offer it through the conventional way. Because uh, in my line of maybe education, the best, uh, appropriate, the most appropriate channel will be to go and be an actuarial officer. Mm -hmm. And an actuarial officer, so you manage risks inside the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm trying to do that outside the insurance company. 
Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, so looking at uh, so looking back mm -hmm. at uh, final track, it's uh, running for how long? Two, three years. Uh, we can say three. Three years. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. So three years, and mm -hmm. uh, so far, what are some of the achievements story that you're looking back in your projects, and you mm -hmm. feel like actually uh, I don't regret studying uh, final track. Yeah, we, we've had. Uh, quite a number of milestones. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is uh, offering GPS tracking to Cooperative Bank, mm -hmm. which was one of our key milestones. So hereby, when people are applying for loans at uh, Cop Bank, we are able to secure the asset on behalf of Cop Bank, mm -hmm. and we also offer the tracking features to the client okay. who has uh, bought uh, the particular vehicle. All right. So that's one of them. We've also been able to offer uh, fleet financing, short-term financing, for the vehicles which we are tracking. So we, oh. we, we get, there's a contract, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which needs trucks. Like currently we are on Mombasa Road, uh, we're doing the expressway. Mm -hmm. So they need trucks, but it's difficult to manage these trucks. They're from different people. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we, we are tracking these trucks, we, we have the devices in them. So we can easily tell this vehicle went for how many trips, when it stopped, uh, and with that, we are able to reconcile with the tonnages. We are able to invoice on behalf of the truck owner and we're able to manage his cash flow. Let's say it's in the middle of the day. Uh, we can easily see this vehicle has covered 60 kilometers. Uh, it had a fuel of 30 liters, so it needs top up. So we can able to top up for the client on his behalf. And on payment, we deduct the amount with a little bit of interest, of course. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's actually solving the problem in the market. A yeah. couple of challenges that mm -hmm. you're facing in the business? Mm, some of the challenges are mainly human resource, human resource challenges. Because uh, when, you, when you founded a, a business, you are really attached to, to the business, you know, mm -hmm. and you have that vigor. So for you, for you uh, the, the clock is not something you look at. Because if you have some project which, in, which needs to be done by tomorrow, We'll do it today. Even if it's until tonight, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to gather a team with the same maybe vigor or running a, a ability to run with the project, mm -hmm. that's the main challenge I can mm -hmm. think for on our end. Right. Yeah. Like getting someone who uh, can uh, incorporate the vision and yeah, the pick the vision and run with it. Run with it. Yeah. How many employees do you have? Uh, currently, about twenty-five. Twenty-five, 25 staff. Right. Yeah. And, uh, In the, within the different uh, companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, Has COVID-19 affected uh, uh, the, any of your employees in terms of you cutting down of, uh, on uh, uh, the staff, staff mm -hmm. income? Mm. Uh, I can say some, yeah, some, some have been affected. Because mm -hmm. uh, you see now, wha and then on the other side, you see, I told you there's a downside to having yes, different yes, companies. Yes, yes. There's also an upside. Because mm -hmm. maybe during this COVID-19, some of the business have really peaked. Mm -hmm. You see, like, uh, let's say the, the one which I've told you, the expressway. Mm -hmm. So the expressway started during this COVID-19 period. It has really been big. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, insurance, we haven't uh, uh, experienced much growth on the insurance side. So for the insurance bit, uh, so most of the staff, were, if you had f something fixed, it was maybe turned to commission-based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right. uh, it was just trying to manage the overheads. Okay, uh, so where do you see uh, Fenetrack three years, four years down the road? Three years, four years down what, the road. What does uh, the vision look like? Uh, for us, cu currently my main focus is now outside Kenya. Mm -hmm. We were really looking at expanding. Because uh, uh, some of our clients are actually venturing up to Rwanda, Burundi. Mm -hmm. So we are tracking for them, for them from here. Mm -hmm. So we can also be able to look at uh, need in also these neighboring countries, and also also within Kenya, the different counties. Because mm -hmm. currently we are mainly focused in uh, Mombasa and Nairobi. So I think there's a lot of opportunity also within the counties. And uh, for that, we are really looking towards the franchise mm -hmm. side of it. And like us opening several branches all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So what is the plan for the festive season? <laughs> uh, for us, <laughs> well, for the express, it's st we're still working also on Christmas. Uh -huh. Yeah, but uh, we will just celebrate uh, as we work. Okay. Yeah. You're still working, all right? <laughs> yeah. Take a break. Yeah. No, we will. Of course, we'll take a break. Oh, so but so. those who are, will be willing to work, they'll mm -hmm. of course show up. Your plans, Joseph? My plans for the holiday. For the holiday, 
I'll just be around. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think guys find mm -hmm. your social media handles if they want to reach out to you. Uh, for me, I have a Facebook page mm -hmm. uh, called uh, Joseph Mwongi mm -hmm. and also have a website www.mwongi.co.ke. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the company? Uh, the, the, the good thing with the website, uh -huh. all the companies oh, are really inside that website. Yeah, very yeah, simple. yeah. Because uh, if I started telling you, I'll have to tell you about seven websites. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before we even get to the seven, we have forgotten about the top three. So yeah, true. We just head on to the one website and uh, then reach out to others. Yeah. So www.mungi.co.k so will yeah. mm -hmm. be able to get everything. All oh, right. Thank yeah. you very much, uh, uh, Joseph, for creating time to be with us and talking about matters pertaining mm -hmm. insurance. It was a pleasure. Very much, very much informed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, right, mm -hmm. that is Joseph Monge, uh, Fina Track, Fina Track founder and CEO. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. We'll be right back with more on why in the morning at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle. I share you can find me across all my social.